whether elevation discs or divergent discs in recent years, or Vibram or DGA in years gone by, rubber discs seem to be a fad that's here to stay. But what are they actually good for? And at what cost? The plastic or uh, rubber is in the details. Hey everyone, it's Greg from Six Sided Discs. In today's world of disc golf, there's no shortage of plastic options, from the extremely firm to the extremely soft and everything in between. But just when you think you have the softest, squishiest plastic, along comes a rubber disc that can barely support its own weight. Rubber discs are a whole different ball game, or a uh, disc game, than traditional plastic discs. And there are some very specific reasons why. To help me explain that, we have a proper rubber expert, someone who knows the materials inside and out. Co-owner of Elevation Discs, Austin Minocci. Hey, I'm Austin, co-owner of Elevation Disc Golf, and Greg from Six Sided Discs asked me to put together a little video explaining uh, our different types of materials, because uh, I know rubber discs are a little bit weird in the industry. Weird is sometimes the reaction I get when I toss someone a rubber disc for the first time. But before we get into all the great information that Austin has for us today, let's take a moment to step back and talk about how I got in touch with Austin in the first place. You see, for the past year or so, we've carried elevation discs, and for just a bit longer, divergent discs. Both have multiple discs, or in the case of elevation, their entire lineup made from rubber. But unfortunately for me and a couple of my customers, we've had some recent issues. In the past year, I've had two customers return broken rubber discs to me. One, a divergent disc golem broke on its very first throw after an impact with a tree. Another, a Gloji Arowana from Elevation Discs, had torn through the rim while the customer was handling and flexing the disc. I had been working on ideas for a rubber-related video for some time, and while doing research, I decided to reach out to both divergent discs and elevation discs. While I didn't receive a response from Divergent Discs, I did find an interesting note on their website about the Alpus and Golem that very clearly says, quote, warning, stay put discs may break. Stay put, of course, is the name of their rubber blend. It goes on to say, quote, stay put plastic can become brittle in cold weather. We advise against using these discs when outside temperatures are cold as discs can break on impact. Some discs also may break on impact. Do not fold in half as this can damage your disc, making it unusable. So kudos to Divergent for at least having that information posted on their website, though I suspect the more casual purchaser of one of these rubber discs may not find that information until after one of their discs breaks. When I reached out to Elevation Discs, not only did I hear back, but I was blown away with Austin's willingness to share information with me about their different rubber blends, what makes them unique, and more. Elevation Discs, however, is not the first company to produce rubber discs. So let's take a moment to look back. Rubber discs are almost as old as disc golf. One of the first rubber discs was made by the original manufacturer of disc golf discs, DGA. Their first rubber disc, the Gum Putt, was approved by the PDGA way back in 1986. DGA, or Disc Golf Association, owners of DiscGolf.com, was founded by Steady Ed Hedrick in 1976 to form a new international sport. Steady Ed even coined and trademarked the term disc golf, and as they say, the rest is history. Ten years later, in 1996, DGA introduced another rubber disc, the Blowfly, and 12 years after that, in 2008, the Blowfly 2. One year later, Vibram would release their first disc, the VP. Vibram's roots go back much further than disc golf. According to their company website, they created their first pair of rubber sole boots after a tragic climbing accident claimed the lives of six climbers, citing a lack of suitable footwear capable of dealing with mixed surfaces as a partial cause of the accident. One key to Vibram disc golf's success was Steve Dodge. Steve Dodge convinced Vibram to dabble in disc golf manufacturing. Steve Dodge was put in charge of Vibram's disc golf division, with many of their early molds names reflecting their shoe and boot manufacturing. Discs like Summit, Ridge, Ascent, and Trek became quite popular. In 2014, they released a maximum distance driver, the 420. Soon after, the story goes that someone told the big wigs at Vibram what 420 means, and they suddenly got uncomfortable and renamed the 420, making the original a very rare collector item indeed. 
though it's hardly the only collectible disc in the Vibram lineup. Steve Dodge would eventually leave Vibram in 2015, helping to start the Disc Golf Pro Tour a year later in 2016. But it wouldn't be long before Vibram threw in the towel and stopped production of Disc Golf discs altogether in 2018. In the post-pandemic boom, two companies would step up to carry the rubber discs torch into the modern game. Elevation Discs and Divergent Discs. Divergent Discs is known for their lineup of beginner-friendly, lightweight, and very understable discs, with a couple exceptions. While they have a variety of plastics available, such as Max Life, a durable premium blend, and Max Value, a very inexpensive base plastic, it is their rubber blend that we're specifically interested in. Divergent Discs has a pair of discs in their lineup available exclusively in their Stay Put Rubber Blend, the Alpus and Gollum. The Alpus is a 4-4, negative 2-1 approach mid-range hybrid. Alpus is a Filipino word that means to become free or break loose. The Golem is a 4104 super overstable utility mid-range or approach disc, not at all designed for beginners. Elevation Discs is co-owned by Macy and Austin Minocci. Launched in the midst of the pandemic, and they offer some incredibly unique discs in a variety of rubber blends. Currently, Elevation produces five different molds. The Koi, an understable putt and approach disc. The Arowana, a straight to slightly overstable putter. The Interceptor, an overstable or straight mid-range. The Binks, a straight or very understable fairway driver. And finally, the Gecko, a very overstable fairway driver. Now you might be confused as to why I said the Interceptor could be straight or overstable, or that the Binks could be straight or understable. But there's a reason for that. And that is because Elevation Discs takes their flight numbers very seriously. When Elevation introduces a new blend of rubber for one of their discs, they reevaluate the flight characteristics of the disc and assign it new flight numbers. For example, the Interceptor in OG Rubber Blend is rated at 5303. In EcoFlex, it's rated 54-12. And in EcoFlop, it's 54 negative 2 1, going from a very overstable to slightly understable disc, depending on the blend. Similarly, the Binks goes from an 8501 in their newcomer blend to 86 negative 3 1 in the EcoFlex blend. Just like there's a huge difference between the types of plastic you can get from one company, there's also quite a bit of variety in rubber. Here's Austin to tell us more. Now, when we talk about rubber, there's lots of different types of rubber, just like there's lots of different types of plastics. We make discs out of two different types of rubber, which is silicone rubbers and natural rubbers. Now, silicone is a synthetic rubber that you can get these super bright and vibrant colors on. It also has a soft and smooth texture while still being grippy, similar to other premium plastics on the market. To get more specific, this is our OG rubber. It was the first rubber we came out with and it is super floppy and flexible. As far as limiting ground play goes, this is your best bet. Now here we have our Glow G rubber, which is basically just OG rubber with glow added in. Finally, we have our Newcomer rubber, which is similar to our OG in texture and feel, but is just slightly stiffer. And so far we've only used it on our Binks driver. As far as silicone rubber goes, another example would be the stay put material from Divergent Discs. That's silicone rubber, albeit a little bit stiffer than ours. On the natural rubber side of things, we have our EcoFlex rubber, which is actually made of 30% recycled rubber. This is our stiffest material. You can see it just barely bends down in my hand. It's still flexible. You could easily bend it in half, but because of the stiffness, it gives you that extra confidence when you're trying to throw full power. I throw my EcoFlex discs off the tee and full power all the time. As far as feel goes, this is gonna have a really tacky and grippy feel really similar to like that classic pink eraser. Next, we have the Eco Superflex, which is really similar feeling to the EcoFlex, except it is really floppy, pretty much just as floppy as the OG material. And so far, we just have our really overstable driver, the Gecko, in the Eco Superflex material. Finally, we have the Eco Flop material. This is natural rubber made out of 30% recycled rubber, specifically tire rubber. So if you love the smell of tire rubber, give it a whiff. Again, it has a really tacky and grippy texture, just like a tire does. And as far as flexibility goes, it is really similar to OG as well. As far as another popular example of natural rubber goes, all the Vibram X-Link discs were natural rubber. And I'd say our EcoFlex material is probably similar in stiffness to somewhere between the X-Link soft and medium. 
Clearly, there's more than initially meets the eye about rubber discs. So let's take a moment to weigh the pros and cons of rubber discs. Stopping power. We often hear players talk about how they like to use base plastic for their approach discs or putters, uh, like Jawbreaker from Discraft, R-Pro from Innova, or maybe K3 from Castaplast, because it has that extra stopping power. But nothing stops like a rubber disc. Over to Austin again to tell us about stopping power. All of our rubber materials are flexible to some degree. And that flexibility was the main reason that we were drawn to making rubber discs in the first place. With greater flexibility comes greater stopping ability. So you're gonna get less skips, less rollaways, and overall that's gonna take a lot of the randomness out of your disc golf shots. When I'm playing a course, there's normally like five to 10 shots that I actually would wanna skip on, and the other 60 or so, I would rather have no skip and no ground play at all. We found very much the same stopping power in our own testing. However, the floppiness can be unsettling at first. As Austin said, rubber discs can be weird. At our pop-up shops, I love to take a different, unusual disc, like a rubber disc, and toss it to a customer just to see that first reaction or impression to what the disc feels like. And the reaction I typically get from our customers is something like surprise, bemusement, a little bit of a shrug, and a smile as they put it back on the shelf. Those who do try rubber discs seem to be much more likely to stick with them, but there is a steep learning curve. Rubber discs can be hard to adjust to. For this video, I spent quite a bit of time throwing the Glow G Arowana. I've also thrown the Ecoflex Interceptor in the past during one of our Mystery Challenge tournaments. And I have to say, it takes more than a few throws to get used to. You need a really good snap on your release because rubber discs often come out with a little bit of wobble since they're so flexible, but typically that off-axis torque is gone within about the first 50 feet or so of flight. And it's not unusual for players throwing rubber discs for the first time to struggle with a late release or grip lock. Beyond the floppiness, it can be hard to get used to the grip of a rubber disc. Disc golfers can be sort of picky about their grip. Oftentimes in warm weather, we're all trying some version of sports sack or birdie bag, chalk ball or whatever to get a consistent grip. Rubber discs can go one of two ways. As Austin said, their OG blend has a slickness to it. And you may find it's a little bit more like traditional plastic and you need to get more of a grip on your hand before you throw it. However, in the natural rubber blends, the increased grippiness and tackiness may result in unintended late releases. So far then, rubber discs clearly have some incredible stopping power. They put on the brakes really well, offering something most plastics just can't. But the floppiness maybe isn't for everyone, and it can be hard to adjust to that steep learning curve. One of the main questions I had when I reached out to Elevation and Divergent related to durability. Let's see what Austin has to say about durability. Now, when it comes to durability, there's gonna be sort of two categories of durability that I'd like to talk about. The first is the durability that we mostly think of as disc golfers, which is how long is it gonna take for the disc to beat in? Now with a hard plastic disc, when you hit something, it can only bend a certain amount before it has a permanent deformation that's irreversible. With our discs, they hit something and they fold in half, but guess what? That's totally fine. They can do that all day. So that means regardless of how many times you hit the first available tree or the first available brick wall, they're really not gonna undergo much to any permanent deformation, which means the flight characteristics should stay the same for such a long time. I have discs that I've had in my bag for two years and I literally can't tell the difference. Now with our natural rubber discs, the same thing happened. They're flexible enough to be able to bend in half without taking any permanent deformation. Now, another special thing about our discs is their compression molded rubber, which means they have a special characteristic called shape memory. And this basically means that they want to return to the shape that they were originally cured in. So even if you pick it up and it has a little bend in it, you could easily bend the disc a few times and work that kink out and it'll go back to how it was before. I like to think of this almost like fluffing a pillow. Sometimes the stuffing gets a little shoved to one side, but you pick it up, you fluff it out and then it's back to normal. Now the second type of durability I'm gonna talk about is what I call like a special case durability. And particularly this is gonna to pertain to our silicone rubber disc. Now silicone rubber, while it does have good durability to blunt impact, it doesn't do so well with sharp objects because it has a lower tear strength, which practically means there's been instances of these discs being thrown and hitting a sharp object like a jagged tree branch or a sharp succulent and they actually get torn through. 
Another example of this is there's actually a manufacturing defect where little small cracks are found, particularly on the rim. Now, normally we find these cracks and we're able to scrap those discs, but sometimes the cracks are really hard to see. And basically what happens is when the disc gets bent in alignment with that crack, the crack can propagate and create a tear in the disc. Now I say all this, but as far as it's been reported to us, we only have about one in 1500 discs have any sort of issues with tearing and we are reasonable people. So we want you to email us or message us at Elevation Discs on Instagram, the Elevation Disc Golf Facebook page, wherever you can get a hold of us and tell us if something happens to your disc. So we've replaced these torn discs in the past. It's not a big deal. We send you a new one and odds are you'll never have to worry about your next disc tearing again. Now natural rubber on the other hand has a much higher tear strength than silicone rubber. And practically that means we've never seen one of these discs tear or break or anywhere close to that. As Austin mentioned, the cracks in the rubber are almost impossible to see, and it's almost certainly what happened with our customer. As they were bending and flexing the disc, there was probably a small crack they couldn't see that propagated and tore through the rim. And of course, being curious disc testing people, we wanted to see just how durable that disc would be after there was a slight rip in the rim. Or maybe we wanted to see a disc rip in half in slow motion. Either way, as you can see, it didn't last long. Now, as Austin said, they are perfectly reasonable people. And I think it's important for us to let you know that as soon as we explained that we had exchanged that disc for that customer and essentially absorbed the cost of that ourselves, they immediately offered to reimburse us for that. So it's safe to say the issue that we see here and the crack that ended up ripping through this disc is much less common than you might think. Back to Austin now to test the durability of these discs. So now that I've talked about durability a whole bunch, I'm gonna actually show you how durable they are. I'm gonna throw the EcoFlex Arowana and the Glow G Arowana into this wall 15 times as hard as I can and have a before and after shot of both of these discs to compare the flight to. So I'm throwing the Glow G into this concrete wall instead of the cinder block wall because cinder blocks are sharp. So here I'm throwing into about a 10 mile per hour headwind. So if a neutral disc like this was beaten at all, we really should see it here. You can see the perspective is slightly different on the after, but overall the disc still flies very straight and fights the headwind. Here I have a right to left tailwind, which is pretty ideal for a putter shot, honestly. And you can see with the Glow G, I gave it a bit more height and a bit more hyzer, so we're gonna get a lot more right to left movement. Overall though, there was virtually no difference between before and after 15 wall hits. Considering durability was one of my main concerns, I'm really surprised to be concluding in this video that the durability of rubber discs is arguably one of their biggest pros. However, I think there's one last thing we need to add to our list that's a little bit of a con. Variety. Right now, you can get more than a few rubber or super soft plastic discs as putters and approaches from tons of different companies like Gateway, Elevation, Divergent, Westside, Lightning. Discmania even has a discontinued rubbery soft plastic blend called Ladylon perhaps the least subtle and most cringy branding of a line of plastic I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> However, while there's tons of variety for putters and approaches, there's very little to choose from for mid-ranges and drivers. In total, from the companies we've talked about today, there are only three drivers, the Gecko and Binks from Elevation and the Worm from Divergent, and just one mid-range the Interceptor from Elevation, currently available on the market. And if you're a big fan of rubber discs, that's hardly enough to build a full bag. And don't go looking back in time at Vibram for help because the Vibram collector market is crazy. You'll be hard pressed to spend less than $40 on a single disc. Clearly, there's still plenty of room for the rubber disc market to evolve and improve. Elevation discs have made huge strides in introducing new blends and new molds frequently. There were even rumors that Vibram might get back into disc golf just last year. And there's no telling who might try to take a chance on rubber discs in the future. Huge thanks to Austin and Elevation Discs for their help in today's video. You can find many of the rubber discs you saw in this video on our website at sixsideddiscs.com. There's no doubt rubber discs are unique and they add something totally different to your game. 
And while they can fail in somewhat spectacular ways, so can regular plastic discs. Do you throw rubber discs? If so, comment below your favorite. If you don't, comment below why not. What's keeping you from trying rubber discs? Remember, for today, it's the rubber that's in the details. For Six Out of Discs, I'm Greg. We'll see you in the next one. If you like this content and want to see more, please consider liking the video, subscribing to our channel, or supporting us on Patreon. Your support makes this content possible. Now, I've been working on ideas for a video about rubber discs for a little while, so I decided while doing... Uh, okay. Those who do give rubber discs... Rubber? Well, that's not in one piece anymore. <laughs> <laughs>